This meeting is being recorded. All right, so my name is Abdullah and I'll be a presenter for today. I graduated as a computer scientist in 2017 and I've been working on IBM ever since. My job involves developing and managing content and applications for the IBM Digital Nation platform. The areas that I like to focus on are data science, artificial intelligence, and web application development. I think you all know that we have a very exciting mobile app for IBM Digital Nation, which was launched uh, last year. And we keep updating this uh, mobile app with new features and features every uh, few uh, weeks. I ask everyone to go on mute, please. Thank you. Um, so with this application, you can learn digital skills. You can enroll into free courses. We have all the Explorer course and we have the design thinking courses. And these are all video-based courses, which you can also download on your own mobile and uh, learn them on the go. Uh, you can obviously earn digital badges using these courses, and you can also get inspired and innovate with all the ideas that we have in the mobile app. So you can go ahead and download the mobile app by clicking on this link, and my colleague will also send the link on the chat. Now, before we dive into the data science uh, use case, let me give you a brief overview of the IBM Digital Nation Africa platform and show you what we have to offer. IBM Digital Nation Africa is a self-paced learning and innovation platform. That means you can learn wherever and whenever you want at your own pace. Uh, and once you have learned, you can also start innovating and building solutions with the help of our platform. IBM Digital Nation Africa consists of four main features, which are learn, earn badges, innovate, and find jobs. In the learn section, the platform uh, offers a wide range of courses and tools to help you learn about the latest emerging technologies such as cloud, AI, data science, and explore new opportunities in the real world. Then for every course that you complete, you will be offered an IBM digital badge. These badges are verified proof of your achievements, recognized, respected, and valued in the IT industries. And it can be used in your CV and you can also share it on social media. Innovate is one of the, our differentiating factors of our platform, which is apart from giving you badges by APM, we, do, we just do not stop at theoretical learning. We also have a wide range of project-based hands-on courses, which will enable you to start building innovative solutions on the cloud. Finally, the platform offers a job advisor tool, which is powered by IBM Watson. It will help you search for a job which is the most suited, uh, suited according to your skill set. It can also help you uh, perform skill gap analysis and tell you what courses you need to take to further develop your skills. With that being said, let me quickly show you how the platform looks like. I will switch from my PowerPoint presentation to the web browser where I have the uh, website open. So this is the IPM Digital Nation Africa website. And as you can see on the home page, we have the four main features of the website that we just spoke about, which are the learn, innovate, uh, earn badges and find jobs. If you scroll uh, further, you will see the three main journeys of our platform. Explorer is where we provide short video-based courses that are easy to learn and understand. It introduces the users to a key emerging technologies such as AI, data science, and cloud, and shows examples of how uh, the technology is being used in today's world. And then we have the innovator section. Here, users can create their own digital solutions using project-based and um, uh, use case driven courses. And finally, we have the new color section, which is basically designed to offer users the ability to gain key digital skills, which are in high demand in the workplace and are in line with the job roles such as web application developer, cloud developer, AI analyst, and data science. The section also features our job advisor tool, which I mentioned earlier. We'll be focusing on the innovator section today. So let me go ahead and open the innovator journey for you guys. Here at the beginning at the top, you can uh, get inspired uh, with a, a lot of different ideas. Then you can go through the get, uh, design thinking for beginners course and the getting started with IBM Cloud so that you are ready for the other use case driven courses to come. Today we are doing a data science course. 
and it's called employee predicting employee attrition or predicting employee turnover using IBM Plus Studio. And you can find that course under the data science uh, section here. So let me quickly show you how the course looks like. If you open the course, you will see the course overview. You can enroll into the course and resume and you will be able to see the course, uh, basically uh, what we are going to present today. So let me now switch back to the presentation. All right, so what is data science? Data science is the discipline of extracting knowledge and insights from the available data and then sharing your discoveries with everyone. Data science is now more important than ever because now we are surrounded everywhere by data and more data is being created every second. Whether it's in the emails we send, the photos we take, or the hospitals that we go to, almost everything creates data today. According to a recent study published in Forbes 2.5 quintillion, that's 18 zeros uh, of data is being created every single second. And, that, and very little of this data is being uh, analyzed. If you have a look at this image on the right, I think it depicts uh, very well the situation that we have in today's world. There's a tons of information in that pile and that, which can be utilized if we use the correct tools. And that's where data science comes in. It helps in looking through all this pile, make sense out of it by analyzing and finding patterns in that data. And uh, that is what we will be doing today. So why should we use Watson Studio? By using IBM Watson Studio, you can choose the tools you need to analyze, visualize data, to cleanse and shape data, to ingest streaming data, or to create, train, and deploy machine learning models. You can use a single platform for every single thing that I've mentioned. It is very easy to learn. And we have tons of material, materials and templates for you to use and learn from. We have a large collections of data sets that are free to use, which solves one of the main problems as a data scientist, which is to find the right data to use. We have all the tools in one place. The image on the right shows us all the different tools the data scientists use and juggle around. It becomes very difficult to bring them all together and work on them, especially with a lot of teammates. And Watson Studio solves that by having every single, every single uh, tool that you need in one platform. And then all the computation happens in the cloud. The models that we will build can get quite heavy in terms of computation power. So I, with, with, with the help of IBM Watson Studio, you don't need to have that type of computation power on our laptops. Everything happens on the cloud. And lastly, it offers an easy way to integrate with all your web application, website services uh, that are available. Here's the pipeline that we generally follow in the data science world and the pipeline that we will be following today. First, we need to get the data and understand what it is about. Understand its columns, its values, know what business problems you are trying to solve. After that, we prepare the data by taking this data and then wrangling it. By wrangling, I mean transforming the data from one form to another format with the intent of making it more appropriate and valuable to use. Then we can clean and prepare the data as in removing any necessary columns, which are unnecessary columns, which make no sense, fill up missing values, make sure everything is accurate, and this is where most of the time is spent for uh, all the data scientists. Around 80% of, of the time the data scientists spend uh, is gone over here in preparing the data. Then after that, we create the machine learning model for our prepared data. Machine learning is an application of artificial intelligence that provides systems the ability to, the ability to automatically learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. And I'll tell you more about machine learning in the next uh, slide. Then finally, we will deploy and test the data, uh, uh, the model basically at the end of our pipeline. So I just want you guys to remember these four steps. We get the data and we understand it. Then we prepare the data or we clean the data. We create our machine learning model and then we deploy it. These are the four key concepts of the data science pipeline. Now, what is machine learning? Let me explain that concept by asking you to solve a very, very simple exercise. 
I want you guys to think a bit and tell me the missing value over here. You can see all the different values over here. I just want you to uh, see if you can figure out the missing value uh, instead of the question mark. So I'll give you five to 10 seconds. You guys can think about it and uh, let me know in the chat what's the value over here. Nice. So I see, I think almost everyone has figured out the answer. And yes, the answer is 81. And uh, honestly, it's pretty simple, really. But I want you all to think, how did you come up with the answer 81? Right? That, that's the most important part. What you did was pattern recognition. You saw that there is a, there is a pattern in the sequence. Uh, 3 by 3 gives 9. 5 by 5 gives 25, 7 by 7 gives 49. So you deduce that 9 by 9 gives 81, right? And that's exactly the kind of behavior that we are trying to teach to machines. We are trying to teach machines to learn from experience, to recognize patterns based on the data that we give it and make predictions. Machine learning consists of a lot of algorithms that basically use computational methods to learn information directly from data. The two main types are supervised and unsupervised. Supervised basically finds patterns and develops predictive models using both input and output data. And inside we have classification and regression. Classification is basically used for, for uh, predicting discrete responses. Uh, a very easy example would be to predict if a particular team will win or lose a, a World Cup match. Right? Uh, the regression, on the other hand, is used for predicting continuous numeric responses. Uh, here you can predict uh, let's say stock, stock market prices, weather forecast, and so on. Uh, and unsupervised, on the other hand, find patterns based on only the input data. This technique is useful if you're not quite sure what to look for. But we won't deep dive into all of this uh, for, uh, for this webinar. Uh, I just want you guys to remember the classification and regression uh, idea. Uh, and then uh, when we are going through the practical demo, I will explain more of uh, what we are doing. Now, how do we predict attrition? There are numerous ways to predict attrition. Many different attributes that we can uh, leverage. Let's take uh, a company, let's say IBM, for example. And here we can say that every row basically uh, represents one employee of IBM. And the columns represent the different attributes that we'll be using to predict employee attrition. All the different columns that we will use to predict employee attrition are called feature columns. And the column that we're going to predict is called the label column. All right, so let me just repeat that. All the columns, all the attributes that we are going to use to predict if, I, uh, if an employee will leave a company are called feature columns. And the column that we will predict, which is the attrition column, it's called the label column, all right? So here are five example attributes that we can use to predict attrition. Employees age, their salary, how far is the distance from home to their work, how much do they commute? And here to make it easier, um, we have used numbers instead of uh, you know, text to signify how far the house is, with one being very close to their work and 10 being very far from their work. And uh, how are, are they very involved in their job? Like, uh, are they continuously talking to their colleagues? Are they doing work which, are, which is meaningful? And here also we are using numbers to depict if it's low or high. And then if we are seeing if the particular employee works overtime or not, right? So for the first two employees, we, have, we already have all the data. This particular employee, he is 25 years of age. He earns 5,000 salary. He lives very far from his, uh, from his work. And he is very much involved in his job. And he does not do overtime. And over here, you can see that his attrition is no. That means that the, this particular employee did not leave the company. The second employee, for instance, he is earning less salary. He, he is relatively close, closer to his uh, work and he is not very involved in his job, and he does work overtime. 
Now here you can see that this particular employee left the company. So his attrition is yes. So we have these two data and using these two employees, we will, uh, we will basically try to predict if the other two employees will leave a company. All right. So we have the data for these two employees too. We can see their age, their salary, their distance from home, the job environment and over time, but we don't have their attrition. And that is what we will predict. All right, so it's, I have chosen very simple data for you guys to understand. And if you can see this third employee is pretty much similar to the first employee. His age is pretty much the same. His salary is pretty much the same. His distance and job involvement is also pretty much the same. And he also does not do overtime. So I think we all can agree this attrition will be no. This particular employee will not leave the company. Now, what about the fourth employee? I, I want you guys to think about this for a second and let me know of what you think the attrition value for this particular employee will be. Will it be yes or will it be no? I'll give you five to 10 seconds for you guys to answer this. So I'm not seeing a lot of answers, but I want you guys to see, I, I want you guys to see how closely this relates to these two particular employees, right? So we can see the age is pretty much the same with this person. We can see the salary is pretty much the same with this person. The distance from home is same to this person, sorry. And the job involvement also same to this person, but he works overtime. Now I can see the answers that you guys are saying. Some of you guys are saying no, some of you guys are saying yes. And that's, sorry for that. And that's exactly the point, right? Uh, I have purposely chosen this employee to have some similar instance, instances with, or attributes with this particular employee and some attributes uh, similar to this particular employee. So it will be difficult for you guys to predict. And that is why I want you guys to realize now that when it comes to prediction, the more data that we have, the better uh, it will be to predict a particular employee's attrition, right? So this is an example data that we have. But now let me show you uh, the real data set that, that we will be using in today's um, use case. If I just go to my Excel sheet, where we have all the data for all the employees, and here you can see that we have a lot more data, right? We have more than 1,000 uh, rows, we have a lot of different um, attributes. And now if I ask you guys to predict the last employee's um, attrition using this data, it will be almost impossible or very difficult for you guys to do it, right? And that is where the machine learning model comes in. It, it will go through all this data. It will learn based on the different um, attributes and values that it has. And then it will try to predict accurately the, attri the attrition of uh, any particular employee that we give it, right? So that is what we're going to do today. We're gonna to create our machine learning model and we're gonna use it to predict attrition. So that's it in terms of theory. Now let's move on to the hands-on part. Uh, in the hands-on part, we'll, we'll be at a very high level following five basic steps. We will create the Watson Studio service on IBM Cloud. We will create a new project and upload our data that I just showed you. We will refine this data, we'll clean it, clean, it, clean it up a little bit, and then we will create our machine learning model, and then we will test it, all right? So with that being said, let me now jump to, the, uh, to my browser where I have the IBM Cloud website open. Right. I hope you, all of you guys can see my screen. I have the cloud portal open. So if you go ahead to the cloud.ibm.com and you, once you log in, uh, you will be able to see this uh, screen. So uh, we got only one uh, attendee. He's Muhammad and he's asking if the screen is a bit lagging. He's lagging, he's lagging a bit, so if we can slowly okay. sure all right so i have i'm seeing some people saying that the screen is lagging so i'll try my best to go uh, slowly from every screen by screen so that you guys can follow so currently we are we are on the cloud.ibm.com portal and once you log in this is what uh, 
you will see a similar screen to this. If you want to create a Watson Studio service, you can go ahead to the catalog, which is available on the top over here, and click on it. Once you click on the catalog, it will uh, we will be able to see all the different uh, services that are available on the IBM Cloud. Uh, we want to do something that is related to AI. So we will go ahead and click on AI on the left navigation menu. And once you do that, you will uh, see all the different services that are available in, on IBM Cloud for AI. We want to create a Watson Studio service. So I'll go ahead and create a Watson Studio. Right. So right now we have gone to the catalog on IBM Cloud. We have created the AI, uh, we have gone to the AI category and then we have created the Watson Studio service. Uh, once you do that, you will land on a similar screen as shown over here. You can uh, keep everything as default, you can, uh, the region as whatever you want. Uh, and if you scroll down, you can keep everything as default. You don't need to change anything. Just make sure that the light account is set, which is the free account. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and click on create. Right now, you can see that uh, the service is not allowing me to create a service. And it's saying over here that I have already created the service before, so I do not need to create a new one. But once uh, you guys create a Watson Studio service, you will see a screen similar to this, right? You will see the Watson Studio, the name of your Watson Studio service, and you will see a Get Started button. So let's go ahead and click on Get Started. Once you do that, you will be able to see the homepage of IBM Watson Studio. Here you can uh, create a project, you can search for a catalog, um, you can see all the different projects that you're working on. You can see all the different catalogs that you're working on with, with your teammates and other collaborations that you guys might be doing. Uh, and if you scroll a bit more further, you will see all the Watson services that you guys can integrate with IBM Watson Studio. And if you scroll a bit more, you can see all the different um, that, uh, that you can help to improve your knowledge in IBM Watson Studio. This is basically uh, the news in uh, the new in gallery is basically a huge community that we have in IBM Watson Studio of developers, of data scientists who create articles, who create sample projects, who create notebooks which basically help you guys to uh, learn more about data science, to learn more about Watson Studio, and you can use these absolutely, absolutely free of cost and play around with it and learn more uh, about whatever use case that uh, you guys are building. And then at the bottom, you have the helpful links, the documentations, the discussion fronts, and so on, which you can go through and learn more about IBM Watson Studio. So I'll go ahead and I'll scroll up and I'll create a new project. Once you create a new project, you can click on the you can click on the create an empty project. And you can fill out the name, the project description, and add a storage instance. For me, the storage instance is automatically added. If it's not automatically added for you, you will see a button over here. You can click on that button and provision a storage instance very easily. So I'm seeing some comments by people that they're not following and they want me to repeat. Uh, sure, I will repeat, but just uh, for you guys to know that we have this entire webinar recorded. And if you guys miss out on any steps, uh, don't worry. You guys can see the webinar later on. It's recorded and all of these steps are also there in the course that I showed you earlier uh, with, with proper screenshots and steps of what you guys can uh, do and how you guys can you know, basically complete this exercise. So don't worry about that. Uh, everything is there. But just uh, to recap a little bit, um, if you guys remember, we went to the IBM Cloud website. We went to the catalog. We clicked on the AI category. We provisioned the IBM Watson Studio service. All right. And once we did that and we opened IBM Watson Studio service, we had a screen similar to what you have 
uh, what you can see on the webinar screen right now. Um, and then to create a new project, you can click on create a project button over here. Once you do that, you can click on an empty project. And once you do that, you can give the project a name. You can give the project a description and you can give, uh, you can assign a storage instance for that particular project. All right. So once you do that, uh, you guys can go ahead and click on create over here. I have already created a project for you guys to save time. So once you guys click on create, you will see a page similar um, to this. So this is the basically the project home screen. And here you can see then uh, the overview of your project. You can see when it was created. You can see the title of your project. Uh, you can see the uh, overview, basically the description, the storage instance, uh, how many collaborators you have over here, any recent activity that you or your teammates have done on this project. And you can see all the different readme files at the bottom. All right. So we'll go ahead to the assets tab. And once you go to the assets tab, on the right, you can see a place to add your data set. If you remember, I just showed you guys the data set that we'll be using. It's an Excel uh, sheet. I already have it downloaded and it's available inside the course. Uh, and if you guys need, then my colleague will also send you the link of the module where we have the um, basically the data set which we, where you can download. It's in the data refinery module of our predict employee attrition course. So you guys can go ahead over there and download this data set. And once you do that, and once you have extracted, you can drag this and you can drop it on the uh, IBM Watson Studio page. All right. And once you do that, you will see the, um, the data set being shown over here on the screen. All right. I hope everyone is following. Uh, you, the, the data set that I just showed you and the Excel sheet, it's available on our course and it's there in the uh, data refinery module. You guys can go there and you can download the data set and extract it and then you can drag and drop it over here and you will be able to see it on your data asset screen over here. Okay. So once you have the data asset over here, you can click on this three dots button on the right and you can click on refine. So does this assume that we already have the assets of cloud of the storage? Um, no, so like I mentioned, for me, it was assumed because I have done a lot of projects previously. Repeat the question. So we have a user asking if uh, this assumes that we already have an instance of the cloud object storage service. Uh, no, not necessarily. For me, since I have done a lot of different projects, so it was automatically added. But uh, if you guys don't have an object storage, you will see a button over there to provision an object storage for you free of cost. You can click on that button, you can select the light plan and it will create one for you automatically. You guys don't have to worry about that. Right, so right now uh, we have um, added our data set in our project on IBM Watson Studio. And once you click on a refine on that particular data set, you will see this screen. All right. And um, on the screen, you can see the similar columns that I had showed you, shown you in that Excel sheet a lot of different columns and you can see the types of those columns and you can see the values of those columns, all right? But on the right, you can see that a data refinery tool has uh, converted or done some cleaning for us automatically. It has converted some of uh, the types of the columns to their particular, um, uh, based on the particular values. For example, it has converted this to strings because this has all text. It has converted daily rate to integer because it has all numbers and so on. But since uh, we all want to learn how, how to do this and how to clean data sets, so I'll click on delete over here. And this will bring the fresh, fresh copy of our data set, right? So let's go ahead and start exploring our data set. We can do that by clicking on profile.
So this tab basically helps us summarize and visualize all the columns and their values. For example, if you look at the age uh, column over here, you can see that uh, there are there, there is a particular age group. It's 35. So we have around 50 people who are of age 35 in our data set. Make sense? So if you look at the age column, you can see that there are a lot of different ages. We have people of 35 age, we have people of 34 and 30 and so on. And you can see the frequency. So basically how many people are of 35 age, how many people are of 34 age and so on. All right. And you can also see over here that there are 40, 43 unique values. That means that there are 43 different age groups available in this data set. Um, and then if you look at the next column, this is the column that we will use to predict. Basically, this is the attrition column. And this is something obvious that, uh, you know, there are only two unique values, yes and no's. And the maximum length is three, which is yes by ES, three characters. And the minimum length is two, which is NO, which is two characters and so on. So this basically helps to, you know, quickly give you a high level overview of what the columns is, what do they contain. And this helps to figure out which columns that are, you know, you actually don't need. So if you scroll further, you will see some columns, which uh, does not make any sense. For example, the employee count column. So over here, you can see the maximum length is one. The minimum length is one, the mean length is also one, and the unique values is also one. We have thousand values. Over here you can see we have thousand values and all of them are one. It basically is saying that the number of employee in each row is one. So this does not technically make sense to us. It does not add any meaning to us uh, and it won't add any meaning to our machine learning model. So we can go ahead and uh, delete this column. And I'll show you how to delete this uh, in a while. If you scroll a bit more further, you will see the employee number. Employee number is like uh, basically email IDs. All of them are unique. You can see that over here at the bottom, there are 1000 unique values. So it means all the, uh, the, I mean, all the rows have different values for every single employee. Every single employee has their own unique ID, but this does not really give us any uh, meaningful value to us and to also to our uh, machine learning algorithm that we will create. So we can also go ahead and delete this, All right? So if you scroll further, you'll see other uh, uh, columns too, which are not required, but just to save time, you won't go through them. Um, then finally, we also have the visualization tab over here, which can uh, further help to understand, uh, you know, how the uh, data is structured, what the data is about. You can uh, click on any type of graph you want to create. For example, you can create a bar graph, you can see how many uh, people you know, are of uh, attrition, how many people left the company and how many people didn't leave the company based on our Excel sheet. And you can uh, split them with all the different attributes that we have. So this is a very um, easy and intuitive way to uh, play around with the data and to uh, basically understand the data. So let's go back to our data, which is on the data tab. And let's start cleaning. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to delete the columns that we agreed does not make, does not give us any meaningful value, which are the employee count and employee number. So to delete them, you can click on the three dots over here and you can click on remove. Then we have the employee number also, which you can click on the three dots and then you can Right. So this is one easy way to uh, remove all the columns which are not uh, of meaning to us. The other things that we can uh, clean the data set based on is the types of the columns. So we, over here, you can see that the age type is uh, written as string. String is basically used for um, string is basically used for all the types of data which are in text format. Over here, you can see all the data is in numbers format. So this shouldn't be string. This should be an integer type column. And to convert that, it's very easy. You can click on the three dots over here. 
then click on convert column and you can convert it to an integer. Right? It's as easy as that. So we won't convert every single thing over here just to save time. Uh, I'll just leave it uh, over there till that. And on the right, you can see all the different steps that we have performed on the data set as of now. We have removed the employee count column because it didn't give uh, add any value to us. Uh, we removed the employee number column because it did not add any value to us. And then we converted one column from string to integer, right? You actually don't need to worry about converting column types. Our machine learning tool automatically converts all the types from strings to integers and so on if required. But uh, it's good. It's a good idea to uh, to know how to do this basically. So once all of this is done, you can go ahead and click on the play tool. All right. So as of now, all of these steps that we have performed on our data set, it's not actually implemented throughout the data set. Your, what you are seeing is basically for demonstration purposes, and we need to apply these steps on all our rows throughout our data set. All right, so let me repeat what I just said. Uh, currently, we have removed two columns and we have, we have converted one uh, column type, but it's only being shown uh, for demonstration purposes. It has not applied it on our data set. If you want to apply it throughout our data set, which has more than you know thousand uh, values, you need to click on the play button over here. And you just click on save and create job. Now, if I click on save and create job, it will tell me that I already have done this before. Uh, if you can see that I have already one exists with the same name. But once you click on this play icon and click on save and create job, uh, and you run the flow, you will see a screen similar to this. Right. So once you click on the play button, you will see a screen similar to what you have uh, on, the, on the screen right now. Uh, this basically is telling us that we gave an input of our Excel sheet of our data set and is giving you a clean version of uh, that, uh, basically the data set and it's called the shaped.csv file, basically, all right? So once this is done, you can go back to the uh, project here and here you will see our new shape data set which are which is our clean data set all right so let me just look at the chat if there are any questions or if there is someone not following i think it looks good for now Feel free to send us questions anytime and I'll stop to answer them. So let me just quickly recap till now, what we have done is we have provisioned the IBM Watson Studio service. We have downloaded our data set and added it to Watson Studio. We have uh, cleaned our data set by removing some columns, by changing the types of our columns. And then we have ran that particular steps throughout our data set and created a new shaped.csv file, uh, which is uh, something that you can see on the screen right now. All right. So now we have completed the first two uh, parts of our data science pipeline. And let's move on to the machine learning aspect. To do that, you can click on add to project button over here. And you can click on the auto AI experiment. To do that, you can give your auto AI a name. So I'll say webinar demo. And you can give it a description if you want to. You can load it with a machine learning service. Now, again, uh, similar to what you saw for the cloud object storage, uh, if you do not see a machine learning instance shown over here, there will be a button for you guys to create free of charge. You can click on that button. You can uh, provision a light account Watson machine learning service, and it will uh, then show up over here automatically. All right. So once that is done, you can go ahead and click on create. And what we're doing here is basically we're creating an auto AI experiment, which is the um, 
aut automated uh, machine learning uh, tool that we have on IBM Watson Studio. So once you have created the, that particular auto AI service, you can select the file that you want to use, the data set that you want to use. And if you remember, we just cleaned our data set and it's called the shaped.csv uh, file. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on that. We'll click on select asset. And now we'll see all the different uh, attributes on the right that we have in that particular data set, right? So as you can see here, age is of uh, type integer, uh, attrition is of type string, and daily rate is type of integer. So basically the, our auto AI tool has automatically converted all the types of these columns automatically uh, without us having to do it for every single uh, column. So right now it's asking to select the, our prediction column. I think we all know what our prediction column is. We want to predict if an employee will leave a company, we, will, we want to predict the employee attrition. So we will click on the attrition value. And it has automatically selected the best experiment settings for us, right? Um, if you want, you can also experiment with these um, settings. And uh, if you click on experiment settings, you will see a lot of different settings which you can play around with, which you don't need to. But just to give an idea, you can, you know, you can subsample the the data set. If you do not want to use the entire data set, you can subsample it. You can use just some parts of the data set. You can uh, split the training data according to what you want. Currently, how the training works is that 90% of the data is given to the training data split so that it can create the data machine learning model. And 10% of the data is not touched. It's kept, uh, it, it's kept separate and it's called the holdout data. So once the machine learning model is built, this particular 10% data is used to evaluate that machine learning model, all right? So if you want, you can change that, but that's not required. And you can select all the columns that you want to include for your feature columns. If you remember, feature columns are the columns which are used to predict the uh, attri uh, attribute column. So if you want to remove some, you can remove it over here. Um, then if you go to the prediction settings, you will see that the prediction type is automatically selected to binary classification. Binary classification uh, is basically used if you have um, something that you want to predict, which are of just two values. So in our case, attrition can be yes, and attrition can be no. So if you want to predict yes and no, we will use binary classification, like ones and zeros, all right? If you have more classes that you want to predict, for example, if you want to predict uh, the number of seasons, autumn, spring, summer, winter, and if you want to predict something which is more than just yes and no, you can uh, use multi-class classification to do that. And then regression is something uh, which you can use to predict uh, numer numerical values. For example, the weather, uh, the stocks values, and so on. All right, so I'll leave everything as default. I'll click on save settings, and I'll click on run experiment. Once you click on run experiment, it will start uh, preparing the data. Um, I've, and it will take some time, it might take 15 minutes to, for you uh, for it to basically go through the entire machine learning process and create a model for you. So I have already done this beforehand to save time. So I can go ahead to the screen. So this is how it will look like at the end when all the processes and the experiment is complete as, as you can see over here. Uh, here you can see a very visual aspect of how the uh, different algorithms have worked. Basically what the auto AI tool has done, it has created four pipelines and each pipeline is using, you know, some different type of techniques to basically uh, create a machine, uh, you know, uh, to basically predict employee attrition. All of them are using different type of models. It has created these four models and then it has uh, ranked the top performer of all of these modules. Right, and the basic top performer of a particular machine learning model is is created by the uh, by this metric, which is called the ROC AUC. You don't need to worry about it, but this basically is the uh, it's called the receiver 
operating characteristics and area under the curve. It's a metric that is used in the data science world to see how well a particular machine learning model performs. Um, the idea is the closer this is to one, the better the machine learning model is. And as you can see over here, the pipeline four has performed the best. All right. Um, and just to uh, quickly um, show you how the auto AI tool works from uh, the beginning to the end, you can click on swap view over here. And once you do that, see the entire process that the auto AI tool follows to basically, um, you know, create a machine learning model and evaluate them. So let me just quickly tell you what they are. The first one is the read data set. The auto AI tool reads the data set that we have given it to them. It splits the holdout data. As I mentioned earlier, it's the data is split into two categories. 90% of the data is used for training. 10% is used for evaluation. So that is done over here. Then it reads the training data set um, after the split. And then it does some pre-processing. Uh, over here, the machine will try to clean the data as best as it can. Uh, obviously, it's best that you do some cleaning. We do our clean, some cleaning ourselves, and that is what we did. Uh, but the uh, auto AI tool does a lot of the cleaning for you also. Uh, then uh, it selects the model, which it thinks is the best that will work with our current data. Then it has chosen the XGB classifier algorithms. There are a lot of different algorithms and models that the auto AI tool can use. It has selected this particular algorithm that it thought that will be the best suited for our data set. And then it does some hyperparameter optimization. Over here, the auto AI tools plays around with the different type of default settings that, uh, that are there for the model. And then it does some feature engineering. Feature engineering basically means um, that uh, it improves the performance of the models by using numerous techniques, but deriving new columns and so on. And then it does hyper optimize, hyper parameter optimization. This is like a, basically a, a progress map that auto AI tool follows. You don't need to understand or know all of this. It's just uh, for people who are well aware of all the different techniques and areas in data science. For us, auto AI tools does everything for us. So once this is done and once the top performer uh, is selected, you can click on save as model over here, All right? So once you click on save as model, it will be saved under your asset section, assets section uh, of your project. So if you if we go back to our project, you, you will be able to see that auto AI model saved under the model section. So as you can see over here, our model is saved. And uh, if you once if you go ahead and click on this particular model, you will see all the different um, overview, evaluation of that model, and so on. But this is not yet deployed. So if you want to use this uh, model, we need to deploy it. So we'll go to the deploy deployments model, and we'll click on add deployment, and we'll deploy it. Right. It's very easy. If you click on add deployment, you just need to give it a name and some description and click on save. It will deploy it. I've already done that for you and it's shown over here. It's called uh, webinar March 12 deployment. I will click on it. And this is the final step of today's uh, use case. Uh, over here, you can see the uh, deployment of our um, attrition uh, machine learning model. You can see the overview, you can see some uh, descriptions. You can use this particular model in any of your application and IBM Watson Studio gives you the code to do that. So you basically you have the curl code, you have the Java code over here, you have the JavaScript code over here. You can just basically copy paste this in your own um, program. You just need to add a certain uh, tokens and certain uh, credentials over here and you can use it in your own program. And Watson Studio, Watson Studio also gives you the option to test it over here itself. So if you click on test, you will see all the different fields uh, for entering all the values. So for example, if you take an employee, uh, if an, a new employee and you have all of its data, you can add the data over here. For example, we can say age 40 
and daily rate 5,000 and so on. And we can click on predict and it will give us the, uh, the prediction outcome. Currently, I have not added all the values. Right? To, to have a more perfect prediction, you need to add all the different attributes that we have in the Excel sheet. So it might be a bit difficult to do it over here. It might be some time consuming. But we also have an option over here to enter data as JSON. And uh, if you go back to the course, let me quickly go back to the course. If you go to the last module over here in deploy and test, I give you the JSON object uh, ready-made so that you guys can easily test it out. So I'll just quickly go ahead and I'll copy this. Copy. I'll go back to our testing tab and I will paste it over here. All right. So this particular employee, as you can see, his age is 50, he travels rarely, his daily rate is 1,010, he works as sales and so on. And the prediction for this is that this particular employee will leave the company and it's 84% accurate, All right? And you can obviously play around with this data, you can change the 50 to let's say 30 and click on predict and see if it makes any difference. You know, if, if from 84%, it, it went to 88% and so on. And you can just play around with any of the data. And uh, basically, there you have it. That's how easy it is to predict uh, employee attrition uh, with using IBM Watson Studio. Now, let me just quickly go through the chat and Q&As to see if there are any questions. There's a question saying, what does XGB stand for? XGB stands for extreme gradient boosting. And uh, this is just one of the algorithms that uh, IBM Motion Studio uses. Uh, we don't, you don't need to really know this, but if you want to learn more about this, you can just Google it and there is a lot of information available for this particular algorithm. Uh, there is another question. The question is, is there an ability to load a different type of data such as PDF? Um, as of now, uh, there isn't. Um, if you, um, I, mean, I mean, I know that Watson Studio, the team under Watson Studio was working on creating a PDF uh, version uh, to upload PDF versions basically as data sets. But uh, till now they have not implemented it, it's still a work in progress. But if you go to the second course in our innovator journey, which is the identify potential repeat customers. You will see uh, over there, there is a way to upload a PDF file uh, to uh, IBM Watson Knowledge Catalog and to get some, uh, you know, some insights out of it. So you can use that course to basically see how to work with PDF data. What are the programming languages uh, that can be used with machine learning? So maybe read the question. So there is a question um, that Felix is asking, which is, uh, what are the different types, examples of programming languages that can be used for machine learning? Um, there are a lot of different uh, programming languages that are being used with machine learning. And one of the most, um, you know, uh, one of the most high, high in demand that the ones that I know of are Python, uh, there's Java, and both of these are, based, uh, by the way, they are there in our platform. There is R, there is Scala, and there's a lot of more, a lot more. We have Python and Java on our platform, so you can go ahead and learn uh, in the, the new color section of our platform. You can find Java and Python. And uh, obviously, as I showed over here, if you go under implementation, you can see all the different code snippets. Uh, we have curl, you have Java, you have JavaScript, you have Python, you have Scala. So all these basically can be used uh, with your machine learning um, algorithm. You can create programs out of these and you can just copy paste this uh, code from here and you'll be good to go. So I have a lot of queries on the chat and then on the Q&A panel on uh, the presentation and the recording of this webinar. So uh, if you remember when you joined this webinar, you have entered your first last names and then your emails. So I have a record of all of your emails. I will definitely send uh, the recording and the presentation. Just give me a few days to prepare the recording, the presentation properly. 
and send it to all of you on the email. You don't have to send me your emails on the chat. I already have a record of them. If you, if you think you have put it uh, the wrong way when you uh, uh, logged in into uh, this webinar, just send them to me on the chat. Otherwise, don't send them. I will send this recording and the presentation uh, to all of you. If you have any questions regarding the content of this webinar, please uh, ask Abdullah. All right, thank you, Barut. Let me just quickly go back to our presentation and finish off with a few slides. So at the end of our webinar, I just want to say that we have a lot of different courses on data science on our platform. We have the introduction to data science and analytics course in the Explorer journey. We have three courses in the Innovator journey and we have a lot of courses in the, in the new color path. So you guys can go ahead and take all these courses and uh, go on to, for your data science uh, journey, basically. Um, and that's about it. So if you guys have any questions, uh, any feedback, you guys can put it on the chat and Q and A, and I'll try my best to answer as many as I can. Okay, we are monitoring the chat in case you have questions and then we'll move to uh, our majlis, uh, 30 minute session of majlis, uh, where you can share more of generic questions. But if you have um, content, webinar content related questions, please do so uh, or ask them now. We have a question from Joy saying, does the daily rate currencies need to be converted into a standard? Um, not really, it's up to you guys. So uh, the current data set that we are using, I think uh, those are in dollars, but it's not mentioned over there. It's just uh, uh, numbers without any uh, currency sign. So you guys can change that and add uh, any type of currency, any type of value you want, but you need to, you need to follow that particular uh, currency format for the entire data set. So right now the data set is falling dollars. So I think we should just follow dollars. But if you guys are using some other data set, which is from outside, from your own countries maybe, so you will need to follow the standard for that particular data set. How accurate is this model in real life scenarios? So if you guys, uh, I mean, we have a lot of different machine learning models which are created and uh, right now we just went uh, you know, uh, through a process which was very easy to create and you saw that the accuracy of that model was 84%, right? So that means that 84% uh, of the times it will predict accurately uh, when we add new data to it. But uh, this was just a very easy way to do this. Uh, if you look at the data science uh, machine learning models in real life, people go through it uh, by trial and error, they go through it a lot of different times. They improve the machine learning algorithms over time, and it takes a lot of time for them to create these. So those can become very, very accurate. It can go up to 90% and above. So yeah, so currently in today's world, there are a lot of machine learning algorithms which are very accurate and in terms of predicting uh, the real outcomes. 